Yeah. Thanks everybody for coming out. Um, so I'm going to give a quick presentation on what Power BI is. Um, like a lot of you, it's, you guys have just maybe recently heard about it in passing in some of your classes, but it's a part of a growing movement, you know, in data visualization. So I thought it'd be a really cool opportunity to kind of showcase some of the things that got me into it while I was here at Bentley, and then some of the practical uses that I use in my day to day uh, in my role. So a little about me. I graduated three years ago. Uh, I was part of the advanced standing program in finance. I did my bachelor's in corporate finance and accounting. I also had an LSM in Earth, Environment, and Global Sustainability. But the big reason why I'm here today is because I minored in computer information systems. So while I was here at Bentley, I worked at the Sandbox. I was also a team manager for the Bentley football team and also part of the Bentley Sustainable Investment Group. Currently, I work at Income Research Management. It's a fixed income firm down in Boston. I'm an investment product analyst with an ESG specialist uh, focus. So I think about environmental, social, and governance factors when thinking about our investment process. So what is Power BI? Uh, it's an interactive data visualization tool. So it comes part of the Microsoft Office suite, um, which is why I think a lot of companies have opted to use Power BI rather than some of the other names you might hear. One of them is Tableau. It's something that I actually used when I was here at Bentley. I took a wind energy course and um, the professor that I was working with had us create all these different visuals in Tableau using some data sets that she provided us. Here's an example of what I created back then. It's basically kind of showing um, the average power that you can generate from a wind turbine at different months throughout a different time periods. So I thought this was kind of a cool way of showing something that I used here and now it's kind of grown into a bigger part of my role now. So the biggest part of creating Power BI uh, dashboards is data. And so a lot of you are working with data day to day. I don't know how many of you are CIS ma majors or maybe you have the minor in CIS, um, but I'm sure that you're working within data sets all the time. And so that's the key input for developing the tools and reports that I'll kind of show you later on. There's a variety of ways that you can get data um, and being familiar with all the different ways that you can get it. Uh, some of the examples here, the easiest and the one that I use at work is actually a data feed. So our technology team has provided a bunch of data that they source from Bloomberg, um, cell site data, all types of different data sources, and they make it readily available into one data stream that we can then pull in and create customized reports on. Another way is an API. So it's if you have a third party software, you can kind of connect using your login to kind of get all the data feeds that you might use on a certain website, and you could have that access within Power BI. Um, and another way that I've used um, as a data set to create Power BI dashboards are static Excel files. So if you maybe find a really cool data set the, you know, on you know, NFL stats or NBA stats, which is one of the ways that I used it while I was here, you can use that static file and create a dashboard based off of that. But here's just kind of a snippet of when you open Power BI and you want to you know, get started and you have um, an opportunity to get a data set. These are all the different ways that you can use it. I've recently started using something at the top there called SharePoint List. And so at work, we get a lot of requests. They kind of get logged in a SharePoint list. And so now that we've created a dashboard to help us track the types of requests that we're getting, the number of requests that we're getting. So there's a lot of cool different ways that you can pull in data. So getting familiar with them um, is a really good chance for you to figure out what you like, what data sets you're comfortable with, um, and figure out some new ones that you could work on. So understanding the data is the next big challenge when you're trying to create a Power BI report. Um, so once you have access to the data, understanding the relationships between all the various tables that you can pull in. Um, that's where I found the courses that I took here at Bentley, super beneficial. So I took a few SQL classes, uh, um, I took one with Mark, and they were really awesome. They really pushed me to kind of think more critically about how data can interact with each other, where I'm pulling certain fields in. Um, this is a very simplistic view of how many tables could exist within a certain schema, but when you're working um, in different roles at my firm, we have about 30 different tables pulling in hundreds and hundreds of different fields and they could be interrelated to one another. So being able to read and navigate a schema is really important because if there's a certain thing that you're trying to create, but you don't really know where it lives, finding those relationships, understanding what kind of, what keys that you need to bring in to make the data speak to the visualization you're trying to produce uh, is super important. So if you have an opportunity to take a SQL class or any data modeling class like that, just I think any class really that helps you write a query, write a language, 
whether it's Python, Java, whatever it is, I think it's super helpful to kind of get a baseline understanding. Um, even if you don't use it in your day to day, like I'm not sitting there writing SQL queries every day or you know Python queries, but just being able to understand it, being able to work with our tech team um, and being able to speak to it at a high level allows me to really produce some useful reports for my team and I. So for most of you, that would be CS150, which is our introductory database class, or CS160, which is the data visualization class where they actually teach uh, Tableau and a little bit of Power BI. So keep that in mind when you would register for classes. It's cool to hear you guys have a class on that now. Um, so here are the different types of visuals. So I think these are all really cool and all have a use depending on what you're trying to build and some of the examples that I'll kind of run through um, will kind of showcase how all these different ones can be pulled in. But it has all the typical ones that you'd expect, the ones that you would see in Excel. You have line, line graphs, pie charts, histograms. But I think what really you know, differentiates Power BI from Excel is that it's very interactive. You can kind of slice and dice the way you want to. You can really pull in a really good amount of data and visualize it quickly. Something that if you want to build in Excel could take a really long time to either build, load, and update. Uh, Power BI kind of takes a lot of that pain away from building these really cool visualizations. Another thing that I think is really nice about Power BI is they also have a visual marketplace. So that's something that my firm has utilized in the past. If there's something that doesn't really exist in the standard um, uh, module that we get, you can kind of go to this marketplace and there's people that are very data intensive and in building visualizations on a daily basis. They'll kind of upload uh, their templates here that we can pull in. So this is a really cool opportunity to kind of see what's out there, see what you like. If you are in one of those classes that Mark just mentioned where you're in the data visualization class and you're trying to build some of these models or um, reports, you can always pull in some of these and see if they work with the data that you're working with. So the next couple slides here are just screenshots that I found online um, of different reports and how they can be used. So I'm sure there's a variety of different majors here. So whether it's website analytics, if you're, work, if you're a marketing major and you're thinking maybe that's a path that I wanna go down, there's an opportunity for you to use Power BI in a role or an internship in the future. So you can kind of pull in all the stats that you're getting, whatever server that it, all these stats would be held in. You can kind of create all these different types of visuals um, you have bar charts, line charts, and the really cool thing that I'll show in a little bit and I'll demo some examples that I've found online is that you can basically just click some of these charts. So if you want to see, well, what happened in January 2019 and you can click one of these columns and then all the other visuals around it will be dynamic and change to that. And that's super helpful when we're at work. You know, uh, we're, we're looking at a portfolio and we want to see what happened back in March of 2020. How did we manage our portfolio during COVID? you can kind of click that dot, click that time period, and all the visuals around it will be dynamic and change with it. So I think that's a really cool um, part of Power BI that you don't get with a lot of other tools that we have today. Here's an example if you're looking at energy analysis. This was something that I thought would be useful if anyone's interested in the ESG or sustainability space. This is something that you could do if you're working as a sustainability analyst at maybe a real estate company. You can pull in all the properties, you can pull in all the energy data that you're getting for all those um, places around the country and it'll all feed in here and you can see, well, this is all the different stats that we get throughout the year. I want to see what's the percentage of renewable and you can sort like that. I want to say, well, we have a goal of reducing our coal or fossil fuel exposure. Are we doing that? Can I click this line and see the trend? Um, going in the way that we wanted to. If there are spikes, you can kind of click in even further, see, well, we spiked up during this period and dig in a little bit deeper to understand why um, some of these changes occurred. Another thing up there, you can see up there, you have the fuel and the year slicer. So you can kind of slice the data that you want. So you can pull in 20 years of data, but if you don't want to see all that, you can slice it to what you need it to be, but you always have access to multiple years and uh, oftentimes decades worth of data that would be really challenging to pull in if you're thinking about building it in Excel. Another one is sales. So this is a really popular one um, for a lot of product managers or just folks that are trying to understand what their specific niche or pipeline is doing. You can pull in everything into one. So it's a one-stop shop. You wake up in the morning, you log on. This is something that they look at. Um, you can also sort these by the dates that you see up there. So I think these are really cool ways that folks are trying to interact with their data and be more intentional about what they're looking for. Um, 
I think it's an awesome opportunity. Again, you'll see with some of the examples, being able to click, being able to customize is the key part of Power BI that I want you guys to take away with is everything is customizable in this and it doesn't take a lot of extra effort to customize to your liking. You can create a report for yourself, but if you're working on a team and maybe they're working on a different product, they can put their products in, they can put in maybe the type of chart that they like and you're all kind of looking at the same thing just in the way um, whatever your preferences could be. So this is one chart that we have here. Another one, I remember I was sitting in Jenison right before COVID happened, and this was one of the dashboards that we were looking at. So I was, we were sitting there in 2020, I think I was right over there, and I was sitting next to my roommate, and we'd pop one of these open, and we could see kind of how it was changing over time, where these things were happening. But I think this is a really good example if you think about, if you're thinking about going into healthcare, and you think about all the different data points that healthcare professionals have and can utilize a dashboard like this to kind of see trends where things are popping up. I know epidemiology is becoming a more popular field study, infectious disease. This is kind of stuff that they would use, you could build out um, and have access to. So this is stuff that you could see floating around the internet today. This is a different one. This is, might be applicable for everybody in the room, but if you're thinking about, well, how do I get started? I want something really simple something that could be useful for me today, and that's like a personal finance dashboard. So if you have an Excel where you're tracking, you know, where you're spending your money, what you're spending it on, this is something that everybody can use. Um, it's super easy to put together, but it's also something that you can do today and you don't have to like search for a really cool data set. You can just start tracking it on your own. Um, but this is as simple as it gets. You can create it in Excel. You could build the Power BI off of that. And if you update the Excel, everything will update along with it. So I think this is a cool example if anyone's interested in getting into data visualization, start off by something simple as this um, and see where it can take you. So what do I really like about Power BI? I think the ease of use has really changed the way that I do uh, interact with my role. So prior to coming to income research, I don't really use Power BI, but it was something that the firm had worked on. Uh, eventually they opened up something called a self-service BI uh, where folks from different teams could join them, join the tech team in learning how to build our own Power BI dashboards and get access to the data feed that we have. Um, but what was really helpful was that each team has a different use case for the data that we all have. So my team, we're very product focused, we're investment focused, so that's the type of data that we wanted to pull in. If folks on the operations team needed to see kind of daily transactions and trades and all that information, they could do customized reports and build it on their own. If we have folks on our accounting team, they wanna see the billing for the different portfolios, they can build reports all based on the same data feed. Um, I really like that it's quick. You don't have to sit there. We do have legacy Excel reports that take a really long time to load and run. And if you wanna customize it, it's another pain to kind of add the things that you need to it. Um, and they're very susceptible to breaking. So legacy reports that are uh, clunky, they're kind of difficult to change. Power BI replaces all of that. Very easy to change the, the file that you have. You can upload it quickly, deploy it to all the people that need to use it. Um, and I think it was easy to learn. And I think that's because some of the courses that I took here at Bentley allowed me to learn a little bit of the baseline that I needed to kind of transform all the different data sets and things that I wanted to use. So some of the resources, I know that Mark mentioned there's a class here. Um, that's definitely one way that you can kind of get started into Power BI and data visualization if that's what you're interested in. But there's tons of free resources too. Data Camp is something I use here and I still use if I'm trying to learn something within SQL or uh, Python. Um, Coursera is another one. You could take a quick course there and they'll give you the sample data sets that you'd need to create something like this. Udemy is one that actually I use through work. They gave us an opportunity to take a course through there and they taught us everything we needed to know about Power BI from how to build, how to open the app, how to get the data um, sourced, how to create simple visuals, and then how to deploy um, the reports that we were making. And YouTube is a really good one. There have been times where I've been really stuck on how do I create a filter, or how do I get conditional formatting to work. You can just search that up on YouTube, learn it yourself, deploy it, um, makes it a lot easier. And the last thing I would say is it's trial and error. You're gonna fail a lot when you're trying to build some of these, but it's just part of learning. Um, I think there's a lot of great resources out there. So if you need any help, you can always reach out there. And then I have a link here and we can kind of see um, some of the different Power BI dashboards that are out there online. If I can stop here, if anybody has any questions or 
kind of jump in and, and demo a dashboard for you all. Yeah. Is this free to use? Yeah, so there is a free version. Um, you can kind of download Power BI online. I think since Bentley's part of the Microsoft ecosystem, you can download it. Probably you have to reach out to maybe the tech department to, if they need to like um, sign off on it, but it should be free to use, yeah. So here's an example of a dashboard that maybe you would see um, if you are working as a social media manager. Um, this is kind of helpful. It's very simplistic, but also gives you all the info that you need. So let's say that you're running the Patriots Twitter account and you want to see, you know, what's, what were some of the best tweets throughout the season? What were the, you know, the hashtags that worked the best for us? It looks like this is just kind of dummy data, but you can have all this information readily available to you. You can slice it by what you need. Um, if you want to see like a certain time period, like if you want to see within the month of September, what were some of my best tweets and what hashtags did the best, you can click in September. You'll see the total number of impressions that you've gotten, the number of engagements that you've had, likes that you've gotten across your tweets, and everything will be filtered this way. If you want to kind of just condense it, you want to just see the last you know three months, you can use the slicer up here and customize to your need. Um, so this is one really cool example. The click through is really helpful when you're trying to uh, figure out something specific. So if you were thinking about, um, you know, if you're a product manager, you want to see how this specific product line that you have uh, is doing. You can click in, you can get all the data that you need, you can export it. So that's one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that Excel is kind of the dinosaur, but everybody still uses it a lot, unfortunately. So if there is someone on your team that needs to see an Excel file, all of these different visuals that you've created can be exported to Excel um, and you can kind of click through it the way that you need. I can share the link with anybody but there's a ton of different opportunities or uh, sample galleries that they have online on the Microsoft website. Um, happy to answer anything whether it's Power BI related but Yeah, I think it's really important for people that are trying to pull reports together. So <clears throat> if you're, I can just talk about it from the investment perspective is that we have a lot of portfolio managers that are looking at, you know, dozens of, you know, portfolios on a daily basis, being able to kind of customize these Power BI reports that will give you all the high level stats that you need, rather than having to go to Bloomberg or go to all these different Excel files that have bits and pieces of what they need. We were able to kind of centralize it in one place. So I think it's just about centralizing data, being able to see all the different parts in, um, of a portfolio that you need. Um, but I think it really comes down to just ease of use. Um, a lot of the legacy tools that corporations have can be a little clunky and hard to use. So these Power BI reports just allow people to get to where they need to go a lot faster, make decisions a lot quicker, and just again have real-time data as it feeds in. Uh, and I think the best part about this is that you can apply what you can learn here in any role. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to be a data science person to kind of build these out. One of the things that Power BI is geared to do is to, you know, it's for non-technical folks that don't have that same, you know, knowledge base that your tech team might have. They can kind of still go in and build what they need to build if they're just given the tool set that you need, the data that they need. It's you have a schema that you can read and figure out, I need these fields from this table, how can I link it? So it's really meant for everyone to be able to kind of build what they need and customize to their liking. Were you under Gallery? I was, yeah. Oh. Let me see. So I did have a couple examples uh, I'd like to show you. Let me see. So here's one of them that are up there. So this is just like a, um, a financials one for college football. So you can kind of poke through. I think this was just a sample data set. But you can kind of see, you can click through each conference. So if you were to click the SEC, all of the charts that were up there would kind of show you the profits or in revenues um, by year as far as it can go back. If you wanted to see double, if you wanted just to see you know, the Power 5 conferences, you can click all of them. 
and that all of these charts are dynamic and I think that's another feature that people really like about Power BI. Um, it's not like Excel where you kind of can't, you can't get as customized or granular when you want to click in. Um, these are all very, very dynamic. You can click into basically any of the visuals and everything around it will change that people really like about it. Um, here's another one. This is like a, a grocery store Power BI that somebody had built for some Kenyan grocery stores. Uh, but this is a good example of like, if you work in supply chain, you want to see how your product's doing, which ones are selling very well. Um, you would be able to click into the product and everything around it will change. So if you were to click in the DABA one, if you click that, all of the ones will change. You'll see what branches that product is selling the best in. You'll see the demand by that product. Everything will kind of change. You'll see what percentage of it is. So I'm not sure what it is, but if let's say it was a food and beverage, you'll see what percentage of food and bev that one product contributes to. So again, these are very customized to your liking. If there are parts of it that don't fit you and your need, you can always swap them out for different parts uh, and bring them in. So I think that if there's one thing that you take away from this is just to you know, get curious about the data that you're interested in, try to build some visualizations. I think this will just become a bigger part of folks' role as they, as they grow in their career. I think reports every morning, someone's gonna ask you for something. How does it look? How does this look? Being able to find tools that make your job a little bit easier, which is what I've leveraged Power BI to do, um, is a real game changer, kind of frees you up to take on newer and bigger projects. Um, happy to answer any questions um, about how I use it in the day to day, but thank you all for coming out. We'll send all you some links to the sites that we couldn't show you because of the Microsoft outage, which was perfect time. Um, before I put up the attendance code, any comments, questions? How might you guys see yourself using a tool like Power BI? Uh, I do actually have a question. Yeah. Um, do you know if you can use this for a pricing model? Like, uh, I know it's easy to, use, to make a pricing model in like uh, the language R, like, mm -hmm. but do you think you could use it with Power BI as well? Yeah, so there's a really cool feature uh, within Power BI, so you can actually build the charts that you would build in R. Um, so they just have a little icon for R. I think you can also do that for, um, there's an, I think there's Python as well. So if you have certain charts that you really like building within Python, you could take the same code um, and put it right into Power BI and it'll spit out the same one. So if there's a chart that you like in R, a chart that you like in Python, but also a visual that's just native to Power BI, you could put all of them in the same workspace. You want to show this one? This one? It's COVID, but it works. Yeah, that works. <clears throat> so let's see if we can get there. Is that me? Um, how do we switch this? It's on that. Okay. Click, click away. Yeah. So this is a COVID, uh, a COVID dashboard. Hopefully it'll work. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about, the click-through, which is something that I'm a really big fan of. So if you wanted just to see, you know, where are the existing cases, you would be able to click through, let's see, within North America. It'll basically, everything will adapt around it. So you'll see this number change. Um, if there are any deaths, you can also see that change. You can see how it's evolved over time. So this is, um, this is one of the use cases that I really like being able to click through. So if I use it on a day-to-day -day at work, I wanna see you know, which ones I've built some carbon footprinting um, dashboards for my team. So if we wanna see during this year, you know, which sector contributed the most to greenhouse gas emissions within our portfolio, you can kind of click through and you can see all the constituents that contributed the most to it. Um, if you wanna see within a certain space, so let's just say I click this really big, um, yellow dot here, everything about that dot will now transfer to all the other visuals. So I'm not sure where it's located, but you can see what the existing is for that specific dot. You can kind of see how the cases have evolved over time. Um, let's see what, you can see the accumulated growth over time, um, the distribution. So these are all, the click through I think is what's really game changing about Power BI. You can't get that with some other data visualization tools. Um, but yeah, this was, a sample that I'd like to show you guys. But again, there's a lot, 
more interesting ones. I've probably got sick of hearing about COVID and looking at things like that. So there's right. tons of them. Yeah, let's see if this one holds. Let's see. Um, but I would urge you guys to look at the galleries. There's lots of different um, variations. People upload ones all the time. Um, if you upload a cool, if you create a cool one, you can always upload it there too. I think it's really good when you're trying to look for ideas, different visuals that you can create. I've looked at the galleries in the past for things I wanted to create at work. Um, so they're really good templates out there. Um, so again, sorry it doesn't work today, but hopefully there's another chance. Yeah. Oh, I was wondering, like, what exactly is, like, the AI component within Power BI? Yeah, so we actually haven't turned off at work yet. We're still trying to figure out how we can use AI. But um, we've seen the demos of what it could do. So it's called Copilot AI within Power BI. And so if you have, if you pull in a data model, right, and you want to create a custom field uh, based off the existing fields that are there, you can basically tell Copilot, hey, I want to see the weighted average um, price for this specific bond over a certain time period and it'll help you write the syntax or the code that you need to build that measure within Power BI. So I think it's a really, it's one thing that we've pushed for internally to get at work because we think it'll just make creating custom measures a lot easier. But things like AI um, will allow people to create even more measures with the existing data that they have so they don't have to kind of sit there and spin their wheels around. If I want to create this measure, what type of math do I need to do? How can I proof it? You can kind of use some of the examples that something like Copilot uh, would spit out. What other kinds of charts beyond the ones that we normally see in Excel can you create in Power BI? Hmm. It's a lot of the ones that you can think of, um, the ones that you see in Excel. Um, a lot of bar charts, a lot of pie charts. I think one that you don't really see in Excel too often, but is that tree map. I don't know if anyone has seen those. Those are really cool. It's something that we've played around with a lot more at work. So if you're working with different consultants um, in asset management, you can kind of see, oh, you know, this consultant here brought in these many clients and you kind of click through and it'll give you basically a giant rectangle with different shades of colors. And um, so that's kind of helpful that it's something that you can't really get uh, in Excel. Yeah. 